you all out there this is UDX 362 East Tennessee so we finally got the care package today this is the catalyst of the C150 we got it in great shape just want to let you know 390 Wag Master on YouTube uh, it came down during this afternoon before I left out of the house went to do some shopping so I'm glad it made it it took about four days to get from Planet Utah I say four days in their season. We're not going to open up this right now. Maybe later on we'll show us some pictures of it. I'll do a little video on that when I get some time. I'm very quite beat. It's almost like 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock my time. East Coast time right now. So I had to do a lot of work on the antenna today. Um, the good news, we might be able to get a raise up during, during, during the uh, the next day. Because we need to wait till this rain system goes by. Because... It's supposed to rain tomorrow, so just going to let you guys know. I did the spray paint of it. I made some. Um, I did it during at night with the headlamp on, and I had to do a lot of stuff wrapping tin foil on the upper top areas. You know, like where the clamp goes, the double clamp mass part of the beam antenna, where it has those do double U shaped things, where it connects the two poles to the top to the beam. So I had to dealt. I had to actually um, put aluminum tape on it. I can always get more aluminum tape later on, but I wrapped it around with aluminum tape, spray painted, went back in the house to help my mom and my dad, and then I went out there and did some duct taping for about an hour and a half. Then, I'll let you know, I did um, the coax thing like they usually show on the instructions on the RCA rotor, the one I have. But I did like a one hook type, I did not strap it on the top, I did like a like a hook like this, just like that, to leave the thing more room that way. I put an extra 10 foot of coax on the top that way to leave the room like this, and then it's connected down to where the, you're where the rope strap down toward the below the rotor, so I, double, I put two zip ties on that, then I had to stretch the coax wire down to the position we have a lot of room for it it's going to do very good i zip tied that so where the rotor wire where it goes that's where the extension where it's going to go out that way toward the trees and all that stuff and the coax wire will reach to the bottom of the antenna mount no problem plenty of room for that so it's good so i made that hook a very extra um from that part here where the bolt kind of goes to the top of the beam antenna where i put it up there the way the coax stays like this and goes down like this so I left some extra room way out like that and did that so it should be able to do good so so the antenna is ready to go I just hope it does not snap off I don't think it's going to do as long as it's on that rotor and I did some stuff too before you didn't see the last video I did the last video before I did that um, before we talk about this amp um, before um, when you saw the video of the, the antenna on the rotor, um, it's got inside of it now, inside the rotor where, where the brackets, where they connect. So I put two um, meal tapes in there, 1,800 pounds, little short type pieces about that long. So I tied that. Then I put those silver clamp things you see on the mass. I put one of those in there. I put one inside of it, just in case for safety, in case it kicks out. Then... Um, I duct taped it first. I duct taped the whole thing with the with the uh, stuff inside of it, um, even the mill tape and the silver clamp. So I duct tape, lecture tape that, and then I put aluminum tape on top of that wrapper. I make sure not to touch the metal part of the pole. So I had to do that. Then after I put the metal tape around that aluminum tape on top of that like it goes on air ducking so I wrap that around that uh, on the rotor type thing above like this I wrap that around with the rotor with the with this with the duct tape on top of that then spray paint the aluminum on duct on tape when I got done with that then I put uh, duct tape around it again to wrap around the whole thing where the aluminum tape was with the top rotor thing so I make sure everything's good. Didn't spray paint that. Then that was it. 
proven yesterday I did. Then today I had to deal with the double mass mount for that's what it was. And I didn't like I put duct tape on that. No, I put aluminum tape on that. Then spray paint it. Then put duct tape on that. It's the one with the double mass clamps. You guys seen where the, near the beam is. The ones I got for, for $20 about two weeks ago. You guys saw that. So that gave me the extra 10 foot extension. And the beam, uh, the antenna is about 39 feet. Because when I measured it yesterday, it was 39 feet with the measure tape I did. Which my dad had this measure tape for a long time. It's a long 100 foot measure tape he had a long time ago. So he used to use it in Planet Utah and all that stuff. And I think we're going to be ready to go. Let's pray we get this thing up in the air. And we don't have to touch this coax for many years to come. The only thing we have to do in case, um, what we do have to do, I did not, um, I did not limitate where the, where the, um, you know where the brackets, where they disconnect the rotor. Um, that's the only thing I did not, um, illuminate that area. So I did not put a limit tape on the rotor part where you take the rotor off in case you want to take, take the stuff out. We need to do the oil just like that. The only problem with that, I probably have to take that off later on to do all that lumen tape thing again for the top bracket, um, the top rotor. That's what it does. You probably have to do that later on to do that. But this stuff, I put bearing grease in it. It's going to be in there for a long time. We we'll probably have to worry about for many years to come. By that time, I'll be able to have all that stuff again with the lunar tape and duct tape. You can always get it, just in case extra. And zip ties and safety clamps. But the safety clamps will still be in the same thing. That's all you have to do. So I make sure everything's weatherproof when I do that for. So we'll just hope it gets up there this weekend or in a few days after this rain gets done tomorrow. And we have to let it dry off. Maybe on Sunday we'll rise it or Monday. Who knows? We'll have to make sure the conditions are good. I'm not going to do it in rainy conditions to raise the antenna. We need to wait till all that wind dies down. But the weather's looking quite good. So the, this is the box. We're not going to open this right now until I have to look at it when I get some time. But today, I'll tell you 390 Wangmaster, you forgot uh, to drain the power out when it happened when I got it in the mail today. Um... I placed the switches and I pressed this up and it showed like a yellow light and it just went fade out. But I don't have a good power supply for this yet because I had that 25 amp power supply and that ATX board you've seen. Um, if you don't, it says if you don't go above 20 amps on the ATX board, it will blow. That's what it says in the specs I've seen on some of the AliExpress sites and TMU, the ATX board thing, yes. And it's got a 15 amp fuse on that. And my power supply is a 25 amp for the computer thing, but I don't know if Seaweed's going to send me the, the power supply he was going to give me, like he told about it on his, on the live stream with three night with uh, with with um with you three night. I hope he's actually going to send it. I hope he sends it all for free because this will be the best thing in my life to get on the air. It's going to be used for the Mako, and we use this for the beam. And I'll tell you guys. Just so want to give you a little bit more video. Um, the problem with this, what is which is the negative and positive? The blue or black? Is the blue is the black is minus and red is plus? I'm talking which is the negative and positive? Because uh, there's no labels on negative and positive. So I don't want to hook this thing up and smoke it, you know what I mean? Because you have to hook up the right way. So 390, which is the which is the positive and negative? For these wires to hook up your um, power supply so you just tell me about that on the comments so this is pretty done well and nice from udx122 he did a good job on this amp and i won this in the contest from 390's wagon master's live stream on saturday last saturday's live stream so i just want to thank you guys for entering the contest who put me in the contest thing i just want to thank that person for doing that and it was my lucky day because when that shout out will happen on on um, old radio night the week before 
before 390 did the contest, the raffle giveaway. I won stickers on the shout-out giveaway, wheel, the shout-out wheel from Dirty Diaper 21, UDX 21. Then after a few days later, during the next next Saturday on that, and I got luck from that, that shout-out wheel from Dirty Diaper. So I'll show you these stickers I made. So don't worry about that, 390. Um, you know the one you sent the package today? I saw that. I did the instructions like you showed me on it. I cut the bottom side of it, so you, you said to do that. So I, I saw the UDX sticker, I took it off the box, you stuck it on there, and what I did, I put it on one of these magnet things. It's on my mom's vehicle right now, the UDX CB radio, the newest sticker. So it's on there with a magnet mount already, so everybody will see that when my mom drives around, they'll be able to do that. And I'm going to be putting these on her vehicle. This one here, and old radio. I, I just put these in just a few minutes ago to cut. Well, we got those foam type magnets. I found some telephone books today at my local store down in Spring City, so they actually have those magnets on the telephone books now, uh, especially the AT&T ones. So you actually put them on stickers now. If you get like telephone books at your local store with magnets on, like the advertisements or the of like the plumbing and stuff like that use them put your stickers on it then they'll stick on these can't stick on magnets that's good so I'll show you the QSL cards you got me today I looked through them and they were pretty nice and there's no addresses on them so we're good thanks you Jack all right sorry about that. I was interrupted a few minutes ago guys so yeah so I just want to let you know this is the QSL cards 390 gave me today so I'm glad these came today. I looked through earlier. These and UDX stickers, but thanks to Wang Master for sending this today. And I'm glad it came about four days from Salt Lake City, Utah. Let's show you what these cards look like. I'll pull this all out. And there's the ticket thing. So it stays up here. We're gonna keep this as a souvenir. That's the one I won during today that week during Saturdays old radio um sorry I got interrupted guys we're back now so this is the ticket that I got drawn during Saturdays uh, for the C one hundred and fifty the Calvis uh, this is a two pill amp and it does about two hundred whiskeys that's what he showed on the video so I'm gonna link down the video where you can actually check this amp out We'll be able to open this up when I get some time to look at it. I'm going to look at that when we get and do a video on that. So I'm going to link 390's Wagon Master video of the 122, uh, the 150, uh, the C150 Catalyst. And I'll show you the demonstration what he was doing before the raffle giveaway. So this ticket came here on the day on the drawing. So I just want to prove it's actually real. It's not fake. So someone actually entered me a ticket and got me this, and it drew out of that blender. So I'll be keeping this ticket for the silver we have. Thanks for sending this to me, 390 Wang Master. Just want to prove that. And there's the wire that connects that. I was just asking all that. You guys can see that. Let's take a look at the stuff. What he sent. This is his dogs. This is Labradors, UDX 390 Golden Retrievers, not Labrador, sorry about that. So yeah, so that's what I'm saying. He sent me two UDX stickers. So what is it gonna say on one of these things he talks about? I threw one of those Brad's new QSL cards and two QSL cards from the early 60s. I was never around during the 60s, my dad was. So my mom looked at them, they were like pretty impressed. And pretty good. So this is one from Greenville, South Carolina. Greenville, South Carolina is like over near Spartanburg in that area. And I know, yeah, it's near Spartanburg, South Carolina. It's about 800 miles from here, about 300 to 400 miles from here. I've been through that area one time back in 2007 through uh, Spartanburg and Greenville, South Carolina. But this is an old one called Jim Ben Kilo Delta and Delta. 31199. 
I don't know what this car is from, but maybe 390 will explain this in this video. It looks pretty cool. So this is actually shows the channels of the CV band. Channel 4, 5, 6, 9, 11, and 12, and 14, and 22. That's probably what the channels had back in the 1960s. Those are probably the um, the Citizen band, uh, CB radio channels when they used to have license back in the 60s. And they stopped doing after like during like around the 1980s when they got rid of the licensing somewhere around after around 1979 or around 1984 or 83 it was so this was back in the CB radio this is when people had their own call signs from CB radios so this is what they used to look like this is a pretty cool card so we'll be able to keep this here and we'll put them in the unit uh, like we use 390 does tells me and this one from the 1960s I'll show you this really cool card I think you guys start should make some new KSL cards it'll make them look cool so this one is from the head of the Great Lakes so this is like Lake Superior we're looking at in the background looks like something from the Mississippi River um, this guy called head of the Great Lakes Kilo Golf Foxtrot 3263 and that's the guy's name and there was a lady here called Keo Lima Foxtrot 0199 and hers and that's actually probably were two couples that used the radio back then this is actually CB radio stuff and PSCE what is that QSL THX no TNX that's what I'm saying don't know what these mean, but this is a pretty cool West. Oh, this is actually out of Wisconsin Superior. It's near Lake Superior. Allen, Al, and Marty Flatten, Station B, Route 2, Superior, Wisconsin. So let's say we'll look on the back of the card. Autographed by the 391 Master on all over the world. And that's got that nice social network, the old school thing. So this has been autographed by 390 Wagmaster UDX390 just put a stamp on it and it's approved by him either way so this is a nice card 390 Wagmaster and thanks for that these are like the first QSL cards of the 60s never had like that imagine what these people done back in the 80s and 90s but, but they probably made a lot of contacts with this it's a big nice bridge that goes over across between uh, Lake Superior and Wisconsin probably a lot of rivers and this is what they usually look like in the southern United States. I've seen these kind of bridges over in, in Mississippi, Arkansas, between Tennessee. They have them all over the United States like this. And during Florida too, like Jacksonville, Florida, mostly um, through the Carolinas, like North Carolina, South Carolina, and Wilmington, North Carolina has a bridge that looks like this too. But this is pretty quite long, but this is pretty good graphics for that kind of era from the 1960s. They took a lot of drawing in this stuff and a lot of artists that does that. So I'm glad this is some cool retro stuff. So thanks for the QSL cards to this one. This is the one, Brad, UDX59 Zoo. Don't forget to check out his channel on YouTube. Um, he runs this um, United Delta X-Ray, um, the C Radio group on Facebook group. And he's probably the arts department that does all this stuff and 390 is the owner. So this is uh, Brad, one of the UDX 390's buddies, been around for a long time. So this is actually the Great Salt Lake City. I'll explain those things in here because I've been there before. Uh, these are the logos from the United Utah Delta X-ray if you're living in Utah. If you're outside of Utah, these are the stick uh, cards you use. Um, the decals, United Delta X-ray, C radio, and United Delta X-ray. This one's like some of the ones we've seen a while back and it says made in the USA you can't get anything better in American made these kind of things but I love the way he did this QSL cards I wish more people do this Polymer that's a good one those those nice amp boxes and serial antenna I really like the logo on this thing thanks for putting that out there Brad we know that's one of my beam antennas we're going to be putting up during this week so this is all about the Great Salt Lake. 
This is the Wasatch Front and goes up to Park City. And I'll tell you guys of this. And he's called Citizen Z Brad, B Rat. That's uh, Brad, Brad. UDX3 UDX590. We'll be able to talk to him when he stays. This one I actually like the United Delta X ray. And his name is Brad out of Salt Lake City, Utah. He's outside that area, near that area. So, this area of Salt Lake City, I've been here. That's Temple Square. But I've been over that area. They don't let you go into Temple Square. You have to go to the the acquire like the opera thing you go see I did that back in 2010 in December during Christmas we got to saw the more inquire doing Christmas thing and they sing that home alone song from the 1980s and they're the original people that do Halo 3 uh, Halo 2 and Halo 1 video games of the song of Halo they are the original people that does it I never been in, I think this is the stadium I've been to I went to see I think the rodeo, uh, the rodeo days of 47 back in 2015 or 16 it was. We went to saw a rodeo event. I think that's the, what is that called? Uh, it's the, it's the famous basketball jazz players that goes to. And that's the place I went to to get experience of a rodeo days of 47. They actually have a rodeo that does every year for big championship type rodeos. So we went to saw the event, and we're watching, we walked before that day. We ate at Crown Burgers there that day. Crown Burgers is not far from this place. And I've walked downtown Salt Lake City, and I've been on a bus with one time back in 2015 when my dad had to go get something for his Toyota Scion for like a, um, some kind of one of those trailer type mounts. So we went through, but um, we took the, what do they call the train? Um, the UTA type train. We took the UTA train all the way from Pleasant View, Utah, or we did it before in Clinton, Utah, and I did that. And it goes right through here, this area. Usually the railroad area is out near here by down those lights. And I've been on the train before. It'll take you all the way to Salt Lake City to Pleasant View. But mostly, they, you, you get off at Ogden, the one in Ogden out there. I did many a few times. And my sister's done it before. We usually took the train and did it before, and we walked to downtown Salt Lake City to, um, before we get on the one of the local buses that take you around this area, and it goes right down almost south of that area. And this is all that stuff is. I think I've seen this whole entire area, and I've been down here by here a few times before. With uh, My dad drove down this area, and my parents did. And this is like facing from... This is probably on Interstate 15, probably they took this shot of, I guess it is, or a helicopter shot. Because there's only one person flew by a helicopter. And these buildings are big. And I'll tell you about the uh, Salt Lake City, Utah. I've been there. This is actually what Fort Lauderdale, Florida used to look like back in 1992 through 96. About the same size of Salt Lake City. And they usually like 2 million in Salt Lake City. And the whole state is usually less. This is one of the big cities that run the whole entire Utah land, planet Utah. It's only the biggest city only except the other ones like St. George and that. This is the biggest city they have that does all the great stuff there. They got the City Creek Mall, you can go there. And I can see the Newgate Malls right about here. I've been to the Newgate Mall back several years ago. This looks like the Newgate Mall down here. And I went there one time been there a few times they got a bookstore there and all that and before they had city creek mall city creek mall is usually right over this area somewhere around here over this area probably and mostly it's a lot of jam hacked either way but, but they have a crown burger here and i went to the hogan zoo back a few t years ago uh, over this area here the hogan zoo is usually right about here and it's not that big zoo but it's a pretty small size so I've been to lots of zoos in parts of the eastern United States, like the Atlanta Zoo, um, Miami Metro Zoo, um, the Jacksonville Zoo, and those are the only zoos I have been to before, and even my own country survivor back in West Palm Beach, Florida, a long time ago. But this place lights up at night when you see this, when you drive by. And there's a lot of businesses that do this, and a lot of restaurants here too you can eat. And mostly this goes out to 
Interstate 15 and jumps off. So, Dan, this is a pretty cool car, man. Thanks for showing this, Brad. Thanks for seeing this to me, too, from 390 Wagon Master, UDX 360, UDX 390. And this is a pretty nice QSL car from Salt Lake City. It's got all the great stuff on it. I hope we get to see more of these QSL cards from the UDX CB Radio Club out there. I think we should, people should do some more of them. And I think we should get a little bit more really creative if we want to make it look cool. Maybe we could do one with um, another one of those retro type CB radios on them. Like a brown and golden eagle. Or something like a Saturn Galaxy type radio. Or a Saturn Turbo. And maybe we'll have a Quad 5 one in this one, or other stuff like the Anna Cobra 2000. One. And we got to get something really cool on that. Again, we can get really create this stuff if we get really good at it. You got to take time to do that. And I like the way they do this card on the back. It's fantastic. I like the way this does. And I think we should get more something like this. I like the way you can check out the bounces like this. And it's like you guys do basic stuff. It is a nice car what Brad did. And I like the way he does this remark. This is the right direction for a UDX C Radio Club. And I think we should do more of these things. I think we should have more of these kind of cards. Maybe, we'll give, maybe 390 will make one for each UDX mirror. Have their own custom card. Then they actually can copy on their scanner. and Or maybe um, they get a print out their local store. But I like the way Brad did all this. I like to get well detailed this. Shows all single sideband stuff. And this is a lot of graphics he puts in this stuff. He put a lot of work in this. And made the USA and it's awesome. See this one I really like that. That's an awesome sticker. We need to make this really large. And make a really good local sticker on that. And be cool for sideband. And I like the way you put the list of these things. This is actually his place. Uh, this is from Brad. Uh, UDX 59 Zulu. Citizen Pan Z B Rad, that's what it is. And it shows all these things Charlie C 408 Alpha Echo 70 1793 Kilo Foxtrot 6 Pilo Sierra Lima and Kila November Yankee 2 Alpha Alpha Uniform Monitor Station and a confirm QSL with and you put that the, the call sign down or the number and the date and the year local time for mountain time his time zone and the channel frequency where it was on AM FM upper sideband lower sideband communications from a power incorporated CPI 2000 base console C radio vintage of 1978 that's what he usually was talking on his radio. And that's when you write your his QSL, the time, the day, and the radio he was using. These are all the specifications you can see. And CB, radio, CB base radio or CB mobile radio new or other CB radios. And a Yusu FTM 400DX uh, XDR, 2 meters, 440 mobile, heard about 440s, and a Bofeng BF. F8 HP 2 meter 440 HT and other. And the type of dipoles use different antennas for 11 meter CB long wire horizontal dipole, a serial GPS 27 half quarter wave silver rod vertical vehicle antenna or other. I love the way you did this car, and this is the way I love the way it is. I think we should come out with more cards like this, but. This is an awesome what he did for Brad. And I'm glad UDX390 sent this to me. And I'm glad it's pretty cool. So these QS uh, these stickers might go on this thing. Who knows? Maybe we can make something look cool out of that. I don't know, but let's see how it does. I ain't gonna put them on right now, but we'll pass this along. We we'll get our the, get the UDX3 um, CB Radio Club out there. And I'm glad I won this thing in the contest. It was meant me to win. And I never have won anything for a while except the hat was the last time I got from 390 Wagon Master. It is a beautiful amp. And we'll be able to be using this a little bit more for our serial beam antenna and the Mako V5000. We have to get a, we have to get, we got to run this on a good power supply so we don't want to mess this up. 
I don't want to mess this poor baby up. I want to keep this ant to make it run longer, a long time, and last a very long time. And we're going to make sure everything's right. So this is a pretty nice ant. Thanks for for putting me, the person who did the raffle giveaway and put me in there. I appreciate it. Thanks for doing it. And the drink of the choice tonight we're showing off in this video tonight is RC Cola and a Fuji water. So I just want to let you guys know, this is UDX 362, East Tennessee. And I'm going to let you know, thanks for sending this to me today. And I'm glad that I won the raffle. And thanks for the QSL cards. I'll be keeping them. And make sure, show it around to my families and friends. And pretty quite good. And I'll catch you guys later. UDX 362, East Tennessee. 79 smoke screen shock a wave